everybody, it's Miss Shear, and uh, welcome to my channel. Whether you're new or returning, I thank you so much for being here, and I hope you come back for more. Today's video is going to be another page in the Marguerite Miller Collage Challenge uh, Journal Glue Book. This is a book that I picked up at Value Village, and I just loved the weight and the feel of it, so I thought that this would be this year's collage book. It is week 15, and the prompts are a repeating pattern found in nature, a ledger paper, part of a, pro a product manual or instruction guide, thread or piece of fabric, a quote, and the bonus is something stenciled. So I have done, well, 14 other layouts, as this is week 15. Uh, so if you haven't seen them before, they are in the playlist Marguerite Miller 2024. I have already started by putting down my ledger paper uh, just to get the background started. And then I thought I would do a little something different for this spread, which would fit the prompt a part of a product manual or instruction guide. So I have this book that again I picked up at Value Village and it is, I had it a long time, I've had it quite a while. It's a book that I don't know when it came out, maybe it came out in uh, probably 2005 and it's just a book on scrapbook layouts. So I thought it was really interesting and I like sometimes having inspiration of how to do a layout or just looking at the spreads that people have done just, just to pick up some information. So I thought this would be a good book to use to get my instruction guide. And what, so what I thought I would do is I cut out one of the templates that I thought was interesting. But what I thought I would do is not only use it as um, one of my prompts, but also to do the layout, which I thought would be kind of cool. So with this one here, it starts with layering some layers behind. So I want to do that. The other thing though, before I do that, is I want to do something stenciled. So I'm going to do a little bit of stenciling. I am not going to do a repeating pattern found in nature. I just... Uh, just didn't feel, I couldn't find something that would go with the spread that I wanted to do. So I'm just opting not to, to do that one. I did go to my stencils, which I haven't uh, delved in, into for a long time. I do have a couple ways to organize some of my smaller stencils. I had a bunch of photo albums that I just wasn't, wasn't using anymore. So what I did was, I think these were f uh, five by seven, if, uh, if I remember correctly six by seven yeah so these would fit like a five by seven photo and i just cut them in half because it was a a two page kind of photo thing and i put them in a disc binder uh, disc binding and then i just put them in the little photo things and they're all right to hand so that's one way that i organize them and then another way is i had a little uh, a5 uh, presentation book I guess so this is how I kind of keep some of my smaller stencils just so that I can keep them all together just a little tip there all right so I have pulled out some of the stencils that I thought I might use as background and I want to use the Tim Holtz little circles I love those and I also want to use Valerie P she has a couple stencils that I like from Stampy area. And this one here, I don't even know. It's it's a ledger, which I thought would be appropriate for the spread. I don't even know. I think I got this at a local art store um, called Desair. I live in Halifax and we really don't have a lot of options for craft stores. So I'm pretty sure I picked that one up at, Des at Desair. For the background, I am gonna be using some of the Tim Holtz and I just want it to be subtle. So the ones that I've used are Vintage Photo, Rustic Wilderness, and Black Soot. I do have a little swatch thing that I made, printed off on the computer. 
I did that and then I put a bunch of little uh, circles in and or did I this might have been one that I printed off from online can't remember if I made this one or printed it but the idea is the same is to do a little bit of swatches I then took a piece of acetate so that I could put that over the box and then I, I blend it use the blending brushes or I also have the little inkers to do some color color swatching so that's that's how I kind of keep track of what colors that I have and what it might look like as a darker uh, stencil or, or blending or stamping so I'm just going to start this one here this stencil here it's kind of hard to see but there's some edging and I thought I would go with that in maybe a vintage photo so I'm just going to just grab my blending brush and this may be even covered up I'm not sure but I just thought I would get down just a little bit of stenciling in the corners and I there you do I do need to be careful in a way because I'm using both sides of this stencil so I may get some ink or uh, just kind of transferring through like there but I don't care it's all it's all playing and we're having fun this is Sunday morning and I am going to be posting this this afternoon today as soon as I I like to look uh, watch it over so I need to find time it is kind of time consuming to do vi the videos I do like the interaction with you guys though I appreciate all your kind comments from my last vi uh, video won't really go into that a lot I haven't had time to respond yet this is my day off so like I said it's Sunday and I've worked the past five days and I'm off today and work the next five days so I'm hoping to get to your comments th this evening uh, but thank you so so much for your support I really love doing this I, I like the interaction I used to do this kind of all on my own in my craft room which was lovely I'm thankful I have a craft room and I can do this but sometimes it was a kind of I wish that there was somebody here that I could talk to and share my ideas so I'm glad that um, you found me right so then I think I'll do that on the side as well just to give a little border around the page and again it may be covered up but there may be bits of it that will poke through when I get the rest of the layout done so we might as well get that down and I'm not being fussy about how dark or how light I'm just basically getting it down I got my blending brushes if I remember I'll put a link in the description below just off Amazon they're not expensive brushes and right so let's put this somewhere it's not gonna leak onto everything okay so I think that's enough for the vintage photo now um, I also at Michaels had bought this for my alcohol inks it's an artist loft pencil or um, I guess it's for like Coptic or alcohol pencils but I found that it was really good way to use for my little blending brushes okay so then I want to do maybe a little bit of the bubbles in the green and I don't want this to be very dark I just want to subtly have a few little spots that and I can also spot this again do little bits when uh, finished with the actual layout we can come back to this I'll just get some of this down and hope for the best okay I think that's subtle and in the background we'll see what happens then I just wanted to do a bit of that ledger with some of the black and I don't think I have a black blending brush so let's go with I don't think I have a blank one either let's just go with this one 
Right, so then we'll just get some ledger down. I don't even know really what brand this is. It's just something that I found when I was poking through some of the art, uh, the art stuff. I like going to the art store. It really is. So Desair is downtown Halifax. I live in, in Halifax. And Desair is m more of an art than a craft. So there's not a lot of paper pads and things that you might find at Michael's, a lot of stickers, but it is very artsy fartsy. So you can get lots of watercolored paper and stuff like that there. I was doing a, a course with Valerie Chaudine. I'll link her product, uh, channel below too. She is awesome. She really has inspired me over, especially I found her during COVID, I guess, on Instagram. And she has inspired me so much to just create. And she has just a lovely color palette that I just am so attracted to. And the course, I, I've done a few courses with her. And they're always just so fantastic. I think I am going to add a little bit of blue in the mix. I might regret this later. But I just want to go back to my color chart. I could, I really, I'm kind of leaning towards broken china or maybe salty ocean. T Tim Holtz has some really lovely colors. I don't have them all, as you can tell. For a long time, I was getting them at Michael's and they didn't have a lot of selection, but they, but they do now since everything's kind of back on track. I have what I might do. I was going to do that, but I might do some flowers. Here's some flowers. Actually, what I think I'll do now is do my layout, and then we'll come back with that just so that I can see where, where things are going to go. Right, so, so the next thing, according to my little prompt, is I need to get some strips down in the background. Most of the paper pads nowadays have a strip page or they have a branding strip at the stop at the top. I always cut those up and then I keep them in a plastic bin that I um I have a little wheelie thing that has the all my strips and and paper. So I went to that to kind of get some strips that I thought might go with the layout. And if you just have scraps of paper, just use those up. But I had these ones, so I thought these would go well. I want them all to be roughly the same length. So I'm just going to kind of cut it. I'm going to have to cut that butterfly, but that's okay. I'm going to cut them about that length so that they can sit in the layout like so. Okay, And then I just, again, just want them roughly the same length so I could have had this all done off camera today I'm not really sure what the weather's going to be like it's just getting light out now and it's about quarter to 7 a.m. I find I find it funny to think that my friends in Australia like Selena and Joy and my friend Lynn in uh, New Zealand, and I think maybe even you, Paula, in South Africa, the time is, is 12 hours ahead, so it'd be like seven or so at nighttime. I find that kind of strange that things are, I don't know, the world is such an interesting place. And I'm not sure the date, so today is August, or August, April the 7th, I think. And some places today, I'm not sure if it's the 8th or it's still the 6th. I think it's still the 6th. So that's kind of interesting. Right, so I'm just going to get my strips down with a little bit of uh, tape runner. I'm trying to not put a lot of glue in my book as the glue 
generally your water-based glues leave uh, some warping and I can use Fabri-Tac. Fabri-Tac doesn't really leave warping, but I've always used Tape Runner. I've done a lot of card making in the past and when I do cards, I generally will use a Tape Runner. Okay, so my layout here is going to go kind of there. So I thought maybe I could put this strip about there. Okay. I am going to try to get this finished up here and then I'm off to the superstore to get some groceries. It, it'll, it opens at 7 this morning, Sunday morning. And I like to get up. I'm an early riser even if I go to bed late, which is why sometimes I get tired out because I don't sometimes get as much sleep as I'd like. I was doing this layout last night, or not doing it, but kind of getting the prompts together and trying to get my thoughts together. So it was almost midnight before I went to bed and I was up this morning. It's funny because when I go to bed at night, if I tell myself you need to get up at six, I do. I find that completely fascinating. I do set an alarm when I'm working. I don't when I'm not working, but I just find that suggestion when you implant it in your brain the night before your subconscious or my subconscious just knows so this morning i woke up and it was 5 50 I think it was 5 54 so it wasn't exactly six o'clock but it was and my body was ready to get up it was like my alarm had gone off which is kind of neat okay and then i have I love this one. I really wanted to get that flower down, but my other prompt is going to sit and I wanted this strip. I wanted something at the bottom just to finish up the page. This one here, it is very thin, so I think I'll just use the glue. I generally just use Elmer's glue, the glue all. I'm finding though, I accidentally mixed some school glue in with my glue all and it just doesn't seem to be tack being as uh, taken. I don't know, it's just not acting like my normal Elmer's glue. I've not tried glitter glue or the bear glue. So maybe one, one day I will. I just find crafting can be quite expensive. And if I can cut cost on my consumables, then I do try to do that. I think I'll put that right there. This tape runner I just get at Michael's and you, I can get the refills. I was getting the dollar store ones that were $1.25. I've been getting those for years, but they changed the compilation to them and they, they all gum up and they don't flow and I'm ending up ma just making a royal mess. So I've just gone to something a little bit more reliable. This is just um, ad tech crafts tape. I do use Tombow and, and other ones, but that's just my cheap and cheerful one. Okay, so that's going to be where that prompt is going to go. So then my next one is, I've got the ledger paper, the instruction guide. What I thought I would do is use a little piece of ledger so that I can make a little frame or do a little mat with that. So I'm going to get that down. I like to leave a little space somewhere in my layout for my prompts. And I may never want to view the prompts again, but one day I might look at this and think, oh, what were the what were the prompts on that one? So I've already made a little space at the top here when I put the ledger uh, paper down that I'm just going to be able to tuck that in afterwards. My favorite number is number three. So when I saw this as part of this ledger, I was... I thought, oh, I have to use that. And then I want this offset just a bit. So I was thinking that that could go there. And what, what might even be better is if I made a frame or border around that one as well. But I hadn't planned this out, so I'm not sure about... I think that would work. 
Do I got a little piece just there? That might work. I want something sort of blues this time. I love the pastels. And I think that's good. Just use that. So I'm just going to get this tacked down and then we'll cut it out. I left my big scissors out in the living room, but that's okay. I'll just cut this by hand and hope that it's straight. I could use my cutter, but sometimes you just gotta leave the perfectionism behind, which I find sometimes is hard. I like straight lines and it's funny though, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I wanna tear things and make it look a little bit more random and sometimes I don't. Now, see, I just really find that's added a little something something to the eye. I like when your eye is drawn around the page to different colors and different elements. And to me, that's what collage is all about. I love the surreal collage. I don't typically, haven't been doing it, but I love those that do it. Debbie over at My Vagabond Style, her, her Marguerite Millers are typically uh, surreal or really in interesting. So I love that. Okay, so then in the layout here, I've got another background paper. So that's this one here, and it is offset just a bit. So I thought that that would go well there. So we'll get this tacked down. And then for my thread or material, I've used both. Before I put this down though, I found in my stash, which is quite interesting, this material and i'm not really sure what it is i think it was part um i for a lot of my career was an infection control specialist and we would get all kinds of product samples and i believe this was some kind of a, a wipe like a jiffy wipe or something but it's kind of thicker and it has a really cool consistency so i thought because it's kind of stiffer i would make a fabric tag so I've made a little bit of tag and that's in my picture there. So I want that to go a little bit there, but I want the number three to be seen. So I'm kind of thinking that maybe we'll make it work to go about here. Okay. So then this is my part of my material. The other thing I did is I took some muslin Here's another piece of material that I'm going to use. This was actually a piece of my mother's. I like putting my mom in my work. Uh, but I took just some muslin, muslin and I did some stenciling on it. So these stencils here are actually a two-part mask. And what you do is you stencil down the background. So I'm not sure where the where the butterflies went. I got so, so much stuff out here. My desk is really small and when I get lots of stuff onto it, I can't find anything. But the idea is, I can show you with this one here because this is how I did that one, is you put the background. So I did that in a lighter color. So I initially put that down in the same with the butterfly mask and then I blended in the lighter color in the background then I, with this one here, put the second mask, which is the butterfly mask, which is the one that I can't find right now. But you then put that over top, top of it to do the, the detailing. And that's how I did those two. Then when I finished with this one, I just took an old uh, black liner pen and I just traced around it, which I thought added a little bit of detail for this one. You need to make sure though, that it's a marker that you're not going to mind um, if it, it doesn't ruin it, but the, some of the ink gets onto the nib of the pen and then the pen doesn't flow is, is great. So if you've got an old pen that you have around, that, that's what I would suggest uh, using for that. So to get that down, I'm just going to use a little bit of Fabri-Tac. The other thing that I did is I found, I went to my embroidery floss 
uh, and I just found a nice green and I hand stitched a little stitching around the side of the tag just so that I could add a little detail. And then I just had some crochet cotton and that's what I made the top, uh, the top pull, the tag, the tag pull at the top there. That's what I used. I tried to do the stenciling initially on the back or on this one here, but I didn't really like how those colors uh, turned out. So I just flipped the material over and I did another one on the top side. And I thought that we'll just get that down on the tag. And that would look cute. I tried to fray it a little bit around the sides. And then that can kind of go there. And then with this one, I think I'll get this material down first. Again, I'm just going to use some Fabri-Tac. Make sure that it's all tacked down around the edges. I don't have to weld it down. This book doesn't do a, have a lot of wear and tear on it. I just want to make sure that it does get down so that it, the corners don't rip up or something when I am opening up the pages. So let's get a little bit of that down. And according to the diagram, I'm going to put that kind of here. Now, the diagram is, I can't replicate it exactly. That's a 12 by 12 page that they've used for, for the that layout. And I'm only using, I think my page is roughly 10 and a half by eight and a half, I think. So I'm just not going to be able to do the same sort of spatial ones that, that that one does, but it was just a, an inspiration. And I just thought it was kind of cool to take a prompt and then follow the, the prompt to do the rest of the layout. I thought that was interesting. Okay. So that I think is lovely. Love how that butterfly to do that butterfly. I used the Tim Holtz. I believe I used the Victorian velvet and the seedless preserve. But I did have a memento pur purple one that was just a little bit darker. And I just did some little bit there. So there's kind of three tones there. I think that really ca uh, catches the eye. I'm running out of Fabri-Tac. I had a 50% off coupon last or over Easter, I guess, last weekend. And when I went, I went to Michael's and I bought some glue from Fabri-Tac, which I think is excellent price when you use a coupon for sure. So I'm thinking that that will go there. Interesting. And I'll find a way to figure out that. So then I did take some material so that I could make another little swatch down here in this corner, which I think will draw kind of the greens around. I could have even put this a little bit higher, which maybe I'll do. It might, it'll cover a little bit of that, of that lay of the prompt, but I kind of like it. Yeah, I kind of like it as far as visually. So I'm covering that, that will dry. And then I had a piece of material that had some bees and I was doing it for a different project. So I thought I would cut the bee out. Again, bringing my mom into the layout because bees kind of represent my mom in my life now since she's passed on, sadly. But I like to keep her alive in my memory. And I like to include her in my crafts. Her and I used to do a lot of craft work together. She was a sewer, so she did a lot of sewn things crafts and interesting projects. She also did a lot of dried flower stuff. She was very good at it. She was never crafty when I was growing up. It was more when I, I don't know, my, in my mid-20s or so. I finished nursing school when I was 24, I guess. And then I just really got heavy into crafts. I was always into crafts, but I just got quite heavy into it. And she came along for the ride. Oh, I think that looks so, so cute. 
So that's kind of like a fabric applique, I guess you'd call it. And what else? So then I just need to finish up here. I My quote, I'm going to use a art by Marlene. I kind of look through some of her quotes and I guess I really am thinking kind of based on co comments that I mentioned in my last video that this quote would be appropriate in that what you see depends on what you look for. And I think that's so true. I think if we look for negative, if we look for something to criticize, we're always going to find it. So don't look for it. Look for the positive things. But when I was going through the sticker, these sticker pad things, the bold and bright, I also noticed, it's all falling apart, but some but a butterfly that I thought would make a nice embellishment. It's almost like a stenciled look that I really liked. And I think I'll go with, I think I'll go with two of them. I might put one at the top. It's, it is getting into butterfly season. So spring is trying to arrive. I thought it was here the other day, but then we had a nor'easter fly in and leave a lot of ice and snow. The snow didn't stay. It was very heavy snow, but so I'm kind of thinking I'll put that. What would that look like if I put it? I could put it there. I could put it next to that one. I kind of think I need something up in, up in there. So maybe I'll put that around there. So I'm loving that. And then I think we have everything. I just wanted to go ahead and do a wee little bit of stenciling to just maybe fill in a gap. I kind of was going to do some stenciling there, but I, and then I thought about doing some stamping. I kind of like the clean look of this though. So maybe I won't do anything else. I mean, I could do just a little bit of stenciling on there. Maybe just a little bit of a shadowy. But what if I do that and I don't like it? Because I kind of like how that's looking now. I think I'm going to leave that the way it is. I, You know, in your own spread, you'll stop when you feel that you like it and it's time for you to stop. This one here, yeah, I could keep going. What did I say it was? The seventh? But I'm happy with that. So I just want to put my little date stamp, which I think I'll just put right in there, and call that done. So thank you so much for watching. Maybe you've got a little idea, or maybe you've just enjoyed spending a few minutes with me in my craft room today. I am going to be posting another of my junk journal series, uh, the gar a garden story here within the next couple days. I'm just working on the layout now. Okay, so lastly, I've put a little edit in here because when I finished, I realized I wanted, I forgot that I wanted to add a little bit of something to the centers. So I was looking through my stash and I didn't want to use like a half back pearl or anything that was two dimensional because it just makes the book so thick. So I had some of these um, enamel dots, gumdrops, just the enamel adhesive. This was, I think, from Simple Stories, I think. Uh, but I didn't really like the colors. So what I did is I just put a little bit of glue onto the dot. I don't know if that pick picks up. And I just have some glitter here, copper extra fine from Michaels. So I just made my own little glitter dot and I thought that that would be a lovely embellishment to the layout because it catches the light of it. And then I needed something for my butterfly. I always like to put something in the middle of the butterfly and I think one of these will work perfectly. It's one of these ones here. So I'm thinking that I want to put a biggish one and I'm thinking I want to put like one of these ones. Let's see 
how that's going to look. I might have to add some Fabri-Tac on the back of that if it doesn't really stick there. And I think that just adds a little bit of sparkle and bling uh, to the page. I could also put ones here, but I kind of like that they, by not putting that there, it pushes those to the background a little bit. And I kind of like that. Okay, so, so that's it for the layout for today. I did want to give a shout out to my friend Lynn from New Zealand who sent me some uh, happy mail of where she, uh, she lives and a handmade card, which is absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely love that. Some of this stuff will be going into my current junk journal, a garden story, uh, probably in my next video. A lovely tag, I love that charm, and some journaling cards, some tie-dyed, some tie coffee stain, do doily and papers, lovely napkins. I just find it so interesting of what's available in other places or, or countries, and I love the birds and the butterflies. And also some of these vintage papers and this vintage housey game. I'd never really heard of this before. Uh, so if you have experience of playing this game, I'd be interested. It's a type of bingo, I'm assuming, but there's blank boxes. So I'm not really sure how that all runs. And then some lovely e Edith Holden postcards, which are so nice. She's doing an Edith Holden uh, journal. And I've, I've been lucky that my friend Cadence has been in the UK and she actually found me an Edith Holden uh, Edwardian diary book. So I'm so excited to get that and, and have a play. But for today, uh, thank you so much for stopping by. If you did like this, I'd love a like. And I hope you come back for more. And I hope you have safe and a healthy week. Bye for now.